Hello and welcome back to another edition of 5 Minutes on K-12 Online Learning With. And today our with is Elizabeth LeBlanc. So Elizabeth, can you get started by telling us a little bit about yourself? Sure, I'm glad to, and thanks again for having me, Michael. Um, so I wear a couple of hats in this field of K-12 learning. One is as a school leader here at Taos Academy Charter School. Um, it's a small school, blended learning school in northern New Mexico, serving a fairly rural, fairly at-risk population. Um, that, of course, is the primary work that I'm doing right now as we are in the middle of remote learning and transitioning to serve our students in that setting. Um, however, I also work with the Institute for Teaching and Leading, which I co-founded with Dr. Chris Harrington. He's been a guest with you before as well. Um, and Dr. Harrington and I essentially have coalesced our team around helping schools and districts really make transformations that are to a more student-centered learning setting. Um, how can we best meet and serve students wherever they are, whatever zip code they live in, to a more personalized, uh, more student-centered degree. And then I also do education research to try to figure out what are the best practices and lessons we're learning in this field and how do we get them to the people that really can benefit the most from them. So those are my many hats in K-12 learning. All right. So as a school leader yourself, you've probably closed out many school years and started uh, just as many, I would imagine. Um, this year, obviously, we've got a sort of major disruption that's happened to the school year. So how we close it out and how we start up the next one is going to be a little different than what we've seen in the past. What sort of things can school leaders be doing now or thinking about now that would help them adjust or accommodate for that disruption? Right. And well, this is the question that keeps most of us up at night, I think, is the what can we be doing better right now as we're trying to finish up? Because I think at least at the beginning of our transition into remote learning, when we learned our school buildings were closed, there was at first this idea that it might be something temporary that we were looking at a few weeks. It then turned into the end of the school year. So now we're looking at, you know, six to eight weeks for most schools and districts, at least where I am. Um, and now we're getting this idea that we probably need to be thinking even further out. Um, so I think trying to figure out how we do this, as that time has gone on, there've been a couple of transitions, right? So for Taos Academy, we're a blended learning school to begin with. Um, so a lot of our students' work is digital to start with. They're used to interacting with us via email, um, not always being physically present in the building. So we had some things that helped us make that transition a little more seamless than for some other schools and districts, I think. Um, and I just want to say that our teachers and students have done an amazing, amazing job of fully moving our school from this brick and mortar setting and suddenly we have a learning community happening in the cloud um, very quickly. Once we did that though, some of the things that we realized, one was on-demand help was something that, so when a student's in a brick and mortar setting, they can just, they raise their hand, they can go down the hall and find the teacher that they need to help them out. We didn't have anything like that in the first couple of weeks of our transition. We were too busy just getting them, like, are they in their advisory classes? Or they, did they make the leap with us? Do they have the things they need? You know, devices, home access, all of that. So the first two weeks were really about making sure everybody made the leap. And then we were able to build in some of those other supports that we're used to having for students. Um, so to me, that was the biggest piece, like kind of one of my big takeaways is I'm finishing out this year and I'm looking to start up next year, or what are those supports that we need to be thinking about um, kind of beforehand as we're iterating on these models. So I guess the first piece of advice would be um, to school leaders, pause as you're finishing out the school year and take a deep breath. This is time that we did not have at the beginning of this crisis. And we really need to take some time now to reflect on what worked, what didn't, and to work as we're looking ahead to next year on how are we going to iterate and improve um, on, these on these continuity of learning plans. We all had to stand one up really quickly, but now we have time to put a plan into place that's actually reflective of what we want to have happen, not just what is possible to do very quickly. Um, so that would be my first one. It's certainly a different school year to finish up. And I think the last thing would be, um, don't forget to celebrate and kind of find some closure with your students and find ways to stay in touch with them over the summer. I think that's even more important than any other year. 
Um, usually we kind of wave to our seniors and we're like, okay, bye everyone, have a great summer, we'll see you. And this year we're a little more like, do you, you know, fill out this questionnaire. Do you have all these things that you need? Do you know how to get in touch with us? Should anything come up? Um, we're a little more hesitant about letting our kids go, I think. Okay. Um, speaking of next year, one of the things that we do know about pandemics is they often come in waves and um, there's likely, even if there isn't sort of a general second wave, likely going to be local flare-ups. So some districts will be dealing with having to close again, maybe entire states, maybe the entire country or world again. Um, what advice would you mm -hmm. have for school leaders on things that they could be doing to plan and prepare for the next time this might happen? Right. And I think we've, one of the things we've learned is how much we can do once we kind of extend the school beyond the building. So I'd say first and foremost, we need not to lose those lessons. There's truly so much that we can do if we've really learned that the school is not defined by kind of the construct, right? When you say school, usually you see like in your head that little picture of a schoolhouse or we all hear locker doors slamming and think Friday night football, it's kind of nostalgic. And um, I think this has taught us there's so much about school that really and truly is beyond that brick and mortar setting. Um, but I think in terms of kind of preparing for the unknown, now we have a chance to make plans for an extended school closure that closes our buildings regardless of the reason. So we know that you know COVID-19 is an obvious one for right now, but this means that we can be prepared for those for any time that that's a necessity. Um, so I think certainly some of the things that you mentioned about um, you know, using this time for planning. I have a lot of calls from schools and districts surrounding us for support with professional development, like giving their teachers some actual pedagogy around how do you engage students online? Um, it's one thing to learn how to turn on Google Hangouts. That's a big learning curve for some people in and of itself, and it's great when that happens. But then there are other things that we can do to make engagement not just possible, but likely, and to keep our students engaged in the learning process. Um, so I think that's one big piece is figuring out what is the PD that your teachers need in terms of both instruction and the tech tools to go with it. Um, a lot of them have been learning on the fly and would love some actual calm time that is not um, emergency driven to learn these skills and to practice them because they want to serve their kids. I mean, that's really what great teachers do. Um, the other thing I think for school leaders, and it's something that came up for me a little bit later, I was very focused on students and families. Um, I wanted to get my teachers structure and schedules and the support that they needed. But then we also realized there's this emotional toll that happens with our teachers as well, because they are now in that dual role, like they're having homeschool with their own children there, you know. Um, so checking in with your teaching staff and really getting a handle on both where they are, but building in supports for them. And I mean, those social emotional kind of supports that they might be needing to. Um, one thing that we did was start like weekly check ins. And I wish I'd been doing that you know, ever, like at the beginning of this, I, it wasn't even on my mind until like week four, where I was like, oh my gosh, it feels so disconnected from my teaching staff, right? So building those in. But I think those are the, my immediate concerns, kind of my bigger picture, the one that's kind of in the back of my mind right now is how do we transition in and out of, so right now we have, we're good at brick and mortar. We have a working plan. There are things that I would change and iterate and improve on for remote learning but how do I successfully transition our students and families and teachers in and out of that? Because I think we're not going to be looking at zero to 100%. I think likely we'll be staging how we're able to re-enter schools and buildings, and we may have to be staging how we come out of those depending on how things go. So I think that's another piece to think about really deeply is where are those, where are the supports coming? And then where is it that the technology can help us keep the learning going? And where are the pieces where we need to start building the human part back in first in our schools and buildings? So I hope that made a little bit of sense. It's how I'm framing it as I think about all of this heading into summer, because I have a feeling that September and um, August and start of school will be happening very, very quickly this year. I would imagine, yes. So thank you. That's been wonderful. So, <laughs> all right. So this has been another yeah, edition well, of you. Five Minutes on K-12 Online Learning With, and today our with has been Elizabeth LeBlanc.